Or brighter one. So in this video, we will be talking about the physical uh, properties of um, of alkanes. Okay. So, guys, okay, so the physical properties of alkane. What is that supposed to mean? We will talk about the boiling point uh, of the um, um, of the alkanes. So, guys, okay, what is boiling point? So boiling point, of course, is the point at which, you know, your, your vapors, I mean, your, your, the liquid is changing into vapors. So that is that temperature, which we call boiling point. That is not the technical definition. Of course, the technical definition is when the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure, that temperature will be called boiling point. But uh, just to simply understand, um, boiling point is when you have a container and in that container, you take this liquid, okay? And that liquid starts changing into vapors, but the pace of becoming vapor is quite high, okay? Uh, now, when does this happen, guys? When you start heating a liquid, this liquid will start turning into vapor. This vapor is going to exert pressure onto the atmosphere and also onto the walls of this container. So everywhere it's gonna put that pressure. So vapor have vapor pressure. So technically, when this vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure, the pressure that the atmosphere is, is exerting on this, on this vapors, uh, when these two are equal, that temperature, so remember you're putting in heat, so that temperature is called boiling point. So for water, that is 100 degrees Celsius. So if you keep heating, so this is the heat. If you heat water, assume this is H2O water, um, at all the temperatures, guys, let's say room temperature, uh, so the, the water, liquid water, is changing into vapors all the time. So if you leave a puddle of water on a table, uh, so let's say you spill some water on a table, you come in next day, do you think there'll be that water still sitting there? No. At, even at room temperature, the water is evaporating, right? Um, so water is changing from liquid into the gaseous state. The thing is that if you want the vapors to be that many, that their pressure will be equal to the atmospheric pressure, you need to increase the heat. And that uh, temperature at which the vapor pressure will be equal to the atmospheric pressure, technically, that is the boiling point, okay? Now, you will, uh, you will notice that for things which are organic uh, molecules, like um, nail polish removers, they have acetone in them. Um, the, you, uh, uh, the nail polish remover, which is acetone, acetone is an organic molecule. And guys, organic molecule, they tend to have very low boiling point. Why do they have low boiling point is what we're gonna discuss in this video. Um, so alkanes as well, uh, they're organic molecules. They have less low, very low boiling point. Um, so even at room temperature, uh, they will be very rapidly changing from liquid to the gaseous state, to the vapor state, okay? So we say their boiling point is very small. Now, why is that? Uh, so first we need to understand real quick, uh, for water, uh, the water looks like this, guys. H2O looks like this, okay? So when you have a container which is filled with H2O, you basically got a bunch of these molecules, bunch of H2O molecules. So guys, whenever you heat water, um, you're changing the liquid water into the gaseous water, right? So when the H2O goes from liquid L into H2O gas, which we call, um, which we show as G, this happens in the presence of heat, right? Um, you're changing the liquid water into gaseous water. Do you notice the formula of H2O stays H2O? It's the same formula. So what is actually happening? So you're not like basically, you're not breaking H2O into oxygens and hydrogens when you're heating it, when you're changing it into, into vapor, into steam, 
right? So water does not break itself when you heat it. So what is actually happening when you're adding heat to the water, to the liquid water? What is basically happening, guys, is these H2O molecules, when they are at lower temperatures, at room temperature, for example, uh, this H2O molecule number one is talking to this water molecule number two, uh, and it's also talking to wa water molecule number three. So guys, basically what is happening is as this water molecule, oops, so this water molecule is interacting with this water molecule, and uh, this water molecule is interacting with this water molecule. If you keep drawing more and more H2O, you will keep noticing that more and more water molecules are actually interacting with each other and they make these uh, intermolecular interactions. And guys, this is what actually holds the water together. So when uh, the water is sitting at, at room temperature, when it's liquid, a lot of this is going on lot of water molecules, they're talking to each other because they're talking to each other because molecule number one is talking to water to uh, molecule number two. This is called intermolecular interaction. Okay, intermolecular interaction. There are different types of intermolecular interactions named uh, London dispersion force, Van der Waal forces, uh, or dipole dipole uh, charges out oh, dipole dipole interaction uh, you got hydrogen bonding okay now hydrogen bonding is what is going on in this case in water guys uh, hydrogen bonding means whenever you're going to see hydrogen bonded to oxygen it will be able to hydrogen bond now this bond again don't think of this as covalent or ionic bond which are very strong bonds uh, these are relatively weaker uh, but not too weak. I mean, it does affect the properties of the water molecule. So guys, again, as I was saying, uh, one water molecule talks to another water molecule. This interaction is called intermolecular interaction because it's happening between two molecules, uh, like international uh, sports competition will be between two nations. Interstate competition is between two states. Uh, uh, Inter-school competition will be between two schools right? Uh, so intermolecular is between two molecules. So when this molecule interacts with this molecule, this specific interaction uh, is called hydrogen bond. Uh, it's a very um, important interaction that happens among, among uh, the hydrogen. Whenever you have hydrogen with oxygen, uh, we're going to see later on when you have uh, not just oxygen, but nitrogen and fluorine sitting next to hydrogen. Hydrogen is able to perform hydrogen bond, and it's a very uh, uh, it's a very um, uh, important uh, intramolecular interaction. So this interaction, guys, is what enables the water to interact with with each other, and this is what is holding the water together. Okay. Now, when you heat water. So the H2O liquid is looking like this. When you heat it, this blue intermolecular interaction, which is the hydrogen bond, this will be broken. And when this is broken, you got gaseous H2O, okay? Now, uh, are all the molecules able to do this type of interaction? Of course not, okay? Uh, most of the molecules are able to do, let me, let me write down the different intermolecular interactions that are possible. So uh, the dipole, dipole interaction and hydrogen bond, these two are very similar. Actually, they're, they're conceptually, they're the same thing, but specifically when you have hydrogens, you call them hydrogen bond, but both of these are relatively stronger uh, intermolecular interaction. Okay, but the third one, which is the uh, London dispersion force, is there's another name for these, and that's also very commonly used. It's called Van der Waal interaction. So, guys, this is the weakest interaction. This is the weakest interaction. 
And this interaction uh, is uh, found in all types of molecules, whether they are polar molecules or nonpolar molecules. Okay. So, guys, uh, what is this term polar versus nonpolar? Okay. So, guys, okay, so water is considered to be polar. This is H2O. So, water is considered polar and fat or oil. So fat and oil, they're considered nonpolar. Now you, you must uh, have seen this, uh, that water and oil, they're not happy together. If you take oil and you put it into water, uh, it will not mix, right? Actually, oil will float on top of water. Uh, we suggest, first of all, when, when something is, is floating on top of something, it's telling you that it's lighter, it's less dense, okay? So the first fact is that oil or fat is less dense than water, and that's why uh, oil is always floating on top of water. And the second thing you will notice is that when you add oil to the water, it does not mix. Even if you try to mix it, it will form droplets, and, and oil will always uh, we will never mix uh, in, in water, okay? Uh, because of them being polar and nonpolar, okay? Because water is polar and oil and fat, they're nonpolar. Nonpolar never dissolves in polar and polar never dissolves in nonpolar. They're like enemies, okay? So there's this common phrase called like dissolves like. Okay, what does that mean? It means that if you have polar, it will dissolve something else which is also polar. And on the other hand, if you have something which is nonpolar, then it will dissolve something which is also nonpolar. This is what we mean by this term like dissolves like. Okay, so the first thing. Uh, so, so, so what we need to uh, get out of uh, this here is that the water is polar and oil is nonpolar. So what do you guys think? Will they mix together? No, they don't. Do not dissolve. Okay, so guys, you're going to notice that in organic chemistry, most of the molecules we are going to be studying will be nonpolar. Okay, uh, and because whenever you have these long carbon chains with hydrogens on them, guys, this happens to be a nonpolar molecule. And guys, we have, uh, you must have learned this earlier when we learned Lewis structures in your previous classes, and you learned molecular geometry, and you learned whether the molecule is a pol is a polar molecule or a nonpolar molecule. You uh, you find you you tell all this by looking at the difference in the electronegativity. I'm not gonna go into that much detail, guys, uh, but you must have learned this before, that a bond can be a polar bond or a non-polar bond. Guys, carbon-carbon or carbon-hydrogen, these bonds are non-polar and they make the molecule non-polar, okay? So non-polar molecules, guys, they are not able uh, to do uh, hydrogen bond or dipole-dipole, which are the strong intramolecular interactions. Organic molecules are only able uh, to, um, to interact using the van der Waals forces or the London dispersion forces. And these are the weakest of any intramolecular interaction. So guess what does that mean for the boiling or for the liquid changing into the vapor? Remember water uh, needs this temperature of 100 degrees Celsius for it to go from uh, from liquid to the gas to, to reach this boiling point, uh, that technical definition, remember? Uh, the this, this boiling point for organic molecules could be even at room temperature, okay? So um, uh, at, at, at lower temperatures, uh, for example, room temperature, you might find your a uh, nonpolar molecule to be already in a gaseous state. Why? Because they're not able to do 
inter the strong intramolecular interactions. They're not able to hold on to each other very tightly, and that's why they never become liquid. They stay gas. Okay. Now, uh, not all the organic molecules, of course, are gaseous. The smaller ones are. As you get bigger and bigger organic molecules, they tend to have a relatively higher boiling point, and at room temperature, you're going to find them to be liquid. Does that make sense, guys? That if, if you have something uh, with a low boiling point, it will be uh, uh, gaseous uh, at lower temperatures. Uh, because, for example, uh, if we if we call the room temperature, so if I say at room temperature, assume this temperature to be 25 degrees Celsius, okay? So the small molecules of alkanes, for example, methane, which is, remember, CH4, this guy has a very low uh, boiling point. And that's why uh, even at 25 degrees Celsius, this guy is, is in gaseous state. Because even at low, low temperature, it is not able to make those intramolecular interactions because it's so small. But as you get bigger and bigger, uh, alkanes, like when you go to uh, like five carbon chain or a six carbon chain, hexane or pentane or, uh, or you know, uh, octane, nonane, uh, those, uh, those organic, well, those alkanes start becoming liquid because they are able uh, to, uh, to do this, uh, this van der Waal interaction, okay? Uh, and it's more efficient if you got longer carbon chains. Okay, so guys, um, since we're talking about the about the alkanes, for alkanes and in general, guys, about the or all the organic molecules, uh, the longer the chain, the longer is the carbon chain. Okay, so this is dot dot dot. This could be uh, you know as long as possible, as long as possible. So the longer the carbon chain the higher the boiling point. And why is that? It's because the longer carbon chains, they are able to stack very well with each other and they're able to interact with each other much more efficiently. So there's, imagine there's, there's uh, interaction happening here. Okay, so this, this interaction is more efficient if you've got longer carbon chains, and this will give your organic molecule a relatively higher boiling point. Okay, so the longer the chain, the better for boiling point because they can do better van der Waal interactions, better van der Waal forces. Okay, okay, so that's factor number one. The factor number one for boiling point for alkanes is the chain length, how long it is, okay? So if you're going to notice, when you go from carbons number one to four, what does that mean? So if I have, uh, you know, a one carbon or two carbons or three carbon chain or four carbon chain, those alkanes, they tend to be in the gas state. When you go higher, like five and above, that's when at room temperature, you're going to find them to be liquid because they're longer chain, better interaction. Uh, and that's why uh, they are, they stay liquid. Okay. So you need to actually heat them up a little bit to change them, uh, from the liquid to the gas. Okay. All right. So that's one of the factor. The second factor guys that comes into play is the branching. Okay. Now, what does that mean? So when you have branching, so for example, if instead of having uh, four carbons or let's say five carbons like that in the straight chain versus if I have uh, uh, five carbons like this. This is a branched alkane. This one is a long chain, straight chain alkane. This one is the straight chain. This one is the branch chain, okay? Now, which one do you think will be able to stack better like this. Of course, the straight chains will stack better. So guys, more branching is bad. More branching means less interaction, less intramolecular interaction, guys. So less van der Waal forces. And lower is the boiling point. Okay, so if you keep increasing this branching, it's, it keeps getting worse 
for the for the um, for the for the boiling point. Okay. All right. So I hope you guys this makes sense and you guys are able to uh, to tell uh, the physical property like the boiling point for for the alkane mm -hmm. and also be able to tell what type of interactions they're able to do and what are the factors that affect the boiling point of the alkanes. Okay. All right. We'll see you guys in the next video.